It's time to find out what's in my bag. It's time to get a clue. Welcome to Get A Clue. Today we're going over the gear that you need to bring while you're going out sailing. Because it's happening in a couple of different weather conditions where you have cold weather, rainy weather, or really hot weather, uh, we just wanna make sure that we are covering all of our bases so that we're nice and comfortable out on the water. All right, so we're gonna go over mandatory safety items that you wanna bring every single time you're going out on the water. We're gonna go over layering, what to wear on hot days, what to wear on cold days, how to make sure that you've got enough layers and what to do with them when you get too hot. We're finally gonna talk about the outer shell of what you're going to need to wear. So how do you combat some of that water that's gonna hit you and some of the wind that's gonna hit you and how you can stay warm and keep your layers dry. Those are the mandatories. I don't know, those aren't the mandatories. Uh, those are the things we're gonna go over today. Yeah! So what does a prepared sailor look like? Well, it looks like me right now. I know you're getting just the torso up version of this and I'll show you what's kind of down below afterwards. But first we're gonna go over the mandatory things that you need to wear when you're on the water so that you are safe and parts of your body are protected. So first things first, we're talking about the PFD. PFD stands for personal flotation device. This one here is perfect. I love this one because I have no padding over the shoulders no padding over here around the waist so that I've got full mobility. I can do jumping jack. Okay, what else makes this PFD a really good choice is that it's a bright color. You want something that's going to contrast the color of the water. So yellows, oranges, reds, all good choices for a color of the PFD. Another thing is that this fits nice and snug. I can still breathe, which is really good. But if I do the shoulder check where I'm pulling on the shoulder straps, my PFD doesn't rise up and cover my mouth just like that. So what do you want to look for in your PFD? Just check this inside panel here. Whew. Check this inside panel here. This will tell you your chest size. It'll tell you how much buoyancy it has. And it'll also tell you that it is Ministry of Transportation approved. That means if the life jacket fails, you can sue the pants off the government. Just kidding, I don't think you actually do that. But that just means that it's gone through some quality control standards and it is a good PFD to use. I recommend this one. This is the Salus Abacus. Uh, I love this PFD. And plus, I've got this wicked pocket up front. I can store a bunch of gear in here and that is awesome just because I love to store gear. Okay, moving on to some other safety things we wanna bring. We're gonna go top to bottom here. So up on the top, I've got my sunglasses. These things look wicked. They make me look wicked. What's important about these? They're polarized and they're UVA, UVB 400 rated. So that means my eyes aren't gonna burn and I'm nice and protected out on the water. So get yourself some polarized sunglasses. The hat, very key as well. Keeps the sun out of your eyes, tried and true. Get yourself a hat. If you got long hair like me and you want to look kind of stylish when you're out on the water but still get that sun protection, get yourself a buff. These things are awesome, super versatile. You can make them into a full headdress, bandana, or just a headband like I'm wearing. I love them. And they give you UV protection so that your head's not going to burn, gets the sun off of your head. Next thing we've got are gloves. Now, take a look. I've got two different pairs of gloves here. I've got these guys. And I've got these guys. Now, the ones that I'm currently wearing, super cheap, pretty durable, but the cheapness factor of them is what they're saving grace is. I paid like 250 for these, uh, so if I ruin them, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. Now, with these other guys, these guys cost me about $60, but they are super durable gloves. I can use these for a whole season and they're not going to wear out. So I love these ones. It just kind of depends on which side of the coin you want. Do you want durability over, you know, disposability, that kind of thing. Now, why do you wear gloves? I wear gloves because I like to keep my hands soft. The ladies like soft hands, so that's why I am wearing gloves, all right? You can get rope burn, and you could possibly, you know, cut your hands on certain things on the boat, so why not give yourself a little bit of extra, you know, digital protection, so to speak. 
Okay, so I've got these awesome boots on. These are kind of a two-fold thing. So not only is this providing me warmth, but it's also providing me protection. This forms another one of the safety items we want to be wearing. Notice that they are closed-toed and soft-soled. So they are very flexible. When you're in the boat, you want to be able to get a sense of the balance through your foot. So get a nice soft sole. Now the closed toe, there are a lot of sharp things you can stub your toes on. So this is going to protect your toes and that awesome French manicure, or sorry, pedicure that you just got. Uh, cool thing too, this is made out of neoprene, so it's going to provide you that warmth. Now the one thing is these are going to be very hard to dry once you get water on the inside. So please make sure to avoid the stank of the boot. You gotta bake these, okay? What am I saying baking? Put them out in the sun and just let them bake in the sun so that you can dry them out as quick as possible. Otherwise, you know, the smell of death is going to start coming out of your booties and that is no bueno. Okay, we're gonna start working on the outer shell and now we're gonna work towards the inside, the inner layers. This top thing that I'm wearing is called a smock. Basically what's awesome about this, there's no hood so I'm not gonna worry about getting anything caught on the boom as I'm trying to transition sides of the boat. Another thing, it's got gaskets around the wrists, you got one around the waist and one around the neck just to prevent water from getting into those inner layers. It's nice and thick so it's impermeable to water but it also cuts the wind so that if I'm wet on the inside, you know, I'm not going to get that wind chill effect because it's not hitting those inner layers and cooling down that water. So get something like this. Uh, or you can get, you know, if you have one of those sweet rain jackets, Gore-Tex with taped seams, that's also a great thing to use when you're out on the water, just for a top layer for the torso. All right, forming the bottom layer of my outer shell are these trousers, or what they're called, salopettes. So basically, this is the same kind of material as that top. Uh, this is impermeable to water and it also cuts the wind. These ones are really nice because they're lined. This is more for like a keel boating setting, meaning for the bigger boats. On a dinghy, you want to get something that's more, uh, a little bit tighter because you don't want to have, you know, loose fabric around because it could get caught on things and impair your mobility on the boat. I like these just because they're versatile. I do a lot of dinghy sailing and keel boating. So I kind of use this for both applications. And I also kind of, I, I really like the lining. I think the lining is just, you know, really warm, gets a little bit more dead airspace, so that's good. Uh, but you want something like this, okay? I like the trousers too, because you get a lot of overlap between your layers. But if you just have some Gore-Tex splash pants with tape seams, tape seams are key, uh, those are gonna work for you just as well as these. All right, next up we have the polyester layers. Here we go, I've got one. I got another one, I got this one on, and I got this one on. Four layers, I bring at least two pants, two shirts, just to you know cover myself while I'm out on the water. Why am I wearing polyester tights? Key thing here, what are you looking for? Not cotton, don't wear cotton on the water because once it gets wet, it's waterlogged, it's soggy, it takes forever to dry, and you're just gonna get cold. It doesn't provide any warmth. Get polyester, breathable, and it quick dries, wicks away some sweat, so that you get that you know quick dry factor, right? We're talking like Wolverine healing styles, healing powers. That's what the quick dry factor is for this polyester tight action. Uh, it's great. It's great. One thing I forgot to mention was my buff neck warmer. It makes a return. As the neck warmer, this one is one of the warm winter ones. It's got some fleece on the inside. Gets the wind off my neck. I release a lot of body heat through my neck and I'm sure you do too. So covering that up is just gonna give you a whole nother level of comfort on those cold days. The buff is so versatile. Okay, so as you can see, I've changed into something that's a little bit more light. Here again, I've got that polyester shirt. This one's got some whiffling in it, so it's even more breathable. Provides a little bit of warmth on those, you know, just cool days. But again, still has that great breathability and that great uh, quick dry quality as well. Uh, love this shirt, I would wear this on a warm day. Plus this one is UV 50 rated, so you're almost wearing it as sunscreen, which is awesome. I've got these shorts on. These shorts here, uh, I would probably wear these mostly on a keel boat. Again, these ones kind of have a bit of a padded bottom, so you know I'm sitting on the boat nice and comfortable, not getting any butt rot. Would I wear these on a dinghy? Probably not. Uh, I would get something that's tighter. I would almost wear tights on top of a wetsuit or something like that to just reduce the amount of loose fabric. Again, we're kind of going for that mobility quality. Uh, you don't want your fabric to get caught on something and then it impairs you to do a maneuver or whatever. So I recommend, 
you know, if you're going to wear shorts, maybe some board shorts, uh, and that may be your only layer if it's a really hot day. Uh, but I would go for tights over something that's loose fitting like shorts, on a dinghy at least. All right, on the really cold days, inside my booties, I'm wearing wool socks. Now, when wool socks get wet, yeah, they soak up water, but the good quality of wool is that no matter if it's wet, still provides you some warmth. So yes, these are gonna get waterlogged, but they're still gonna stay warm. Uh, love the wool socks. Wool socks are key. Wear them in your booties for the cold days. Okay, my base layer is the wetsuit. I like to go with this type of wetsuit here. This is a shorty, short arms, short legs. Very versatile throughout the season. If it's cold, I just layer on more. If it's hot, I can wear this alone. Uh, there's many different styles. You can go all the way to steamer, which is all the way to your ankle, sorry, your wrists and your ankles. Go with the Farmer John, which is kind of like a coverall style. You can do a two-piece with the coverall and a top. Get yourself a wetsuit. If you're dinghy sailing, you're gonna get wet. So this is just a good protection to ensure that you've got a nice little layer of insulation, not only from the neoprene itself, which is what wetsuits are made out of, but also you get a small layer of water in between the layer of neoprene and your body. Your body heat warms that up and that is how your wetsuit kind of works to keep you warm. Now, what are you looking for in terms of thickness? This one here is a 1.5 mil, uh, 1.5 millimeter. You can also get a oh, three millimeter. That's for more of the colder kind of sessions. Uh, but 1.5 to 3 is probably the threshold you're going to want to use for some good summer sailing. And like I said, you know, if you get cold, you layer on top, just as you've seen me here today. Uh, if you're really warm, you can wear this alone, maybe with some tights just to protect the neoprene. And plus, when you're wearing a wetsuit, you look like Batman and you freaking feel like Batman. It's like my own superhero costume. What up? One thing you do want to bring out on the water is a nice water bottle. Okay, you gotta stay hydrated when you're on the water. Dehydration leads to fatigue. So give yourself, you know, a nice little hydrating drink. Fresh. One thing I do recommend getting is a multi-tool or a knife. Uh, this is very key just in case you need to untie something or cut a line. You know, you have that tool to be able to do that. I go with the Leatherman. I find it's just very versatile. If you wanna just get yourself a knife, that works too but I'd recommend grabbing something like this. Dinghy sailing, it works really well. Keelboat sailing, you never know when you're gonna need a knife. So I would just, you know, grab yourself a nice multi-tool or utility knife. All right, the last and most important thing you need to bring when you're sailing is the sunscreen. Why is sunscreen so important? Well, you're gonna go out there, you might get sunburned. Sunburns are never good. You don't want a sunburn because you know what sunburns do? They lead to aged skin. You want to look young? This is your key. Now, another thing, melanoma. Definitely a really huge risk of catching that or, you know, getting that when you're sailing because you're out in the sun, you're getting direct sun, you're getting reflected sun off the water. Why not protect yourself? Can you get burned on a cloudy day? Of course you can get burned on a cloudy day. So what should you do? Wear sunscreen on a cloudy day. Sunscreen, literally, literally every time you go sailing, make sure you bring it, so important. All right, so now you know what's in my bag and now you can be a prepared sailor for when you are on the water. Hot conditions, cold conditions, rainy conditions, you've got what you need or what you need to be prepared and comfortable. Let's go over our categories. Safety, PFD, glove, boots, soft sole, closed toe, right? Got that sun protection for your head, sun protection for your eye, sun protection for your skin, outer shell layers for our conditionals, windproofing, waterproofing, trousers, cell pets, or Gore-Tex tape seamed pants. For our top, a smock, no hood, okay? Got gaskets around the waist, wrists, and neck. Okay, again, windproof, waterproof. This is your outer shell, very key. Going on to your layers, cold weather layers, polyester tights, tops and bottom. You know, you wear the wool socks inside your booties. You get yourself one of the neck warmer buffs. Hotter days, go for the breathable UV shirt. We've got the shorts, more for a keelboat setting, remember. On the dinghy setting, you wanna wear something a bit tighter than shorts, but if you have to, board shorts, you know, also a good option. Finally, you end up with the wetsuit as the base layer. 
This is what's gonna provide you your comfort in terms of insulation, both hot and cold. I like the shorty, again, because it's so versatile. I can layer up in the cold and just wear it alone in the hot. Make sure you bring your water bottle, get yourself a knife, and I think you're good to go. Now, you've got a clue.